Farce is a comic dramatic piece that uses highly improbable situations, stereotyped characters, extravagant exaggeration and violent horseplay. A farce is a comedy in which everything is absolutely absurd. This usually involves some kind of deception or miscommunication. When a comedy is based on a case of mistaken identity, for example, you can be sure that it's going to be a farce. Slapstick humor and physical comedy are also common features of a farce. The term farce originated as early as 16th century from French literally meaning stuffing from farcer to stuff from Latin farsire. An earlier sense of force meat stuffing became used metaphorically for comic interludes stuffed into the texts of religious plays which led to the current usage. Farce is generally regarded as intellectually and aesthetically inferior to comedy in its crude characterizations and implausible plots, but it has been sustained by its popularity in performance and has persisted throughout the Western world to the present. Antecedents of farce are found in ancient Greek and Roman theater, both in the comedies of Aristophanes and Plautus and in the popular native Italian fabula atellana, entertainments in which the actors played stock character types such as gluten, greybeard, and clown who were caught in exaggerated situations. In the 15th century France, that the term farce was first used to describe the elements of clowning, acrobatics, caricature, and indecency found together within a single form of entertainment. Such pieces were general initially bits of impromptu buffoonery inserted by actors into the texts of religious plays, hence the use of the old French word farce means stuffing. Such works were afterwards written independently, the most amusing of the extant texts being Master Pierre Pathelin in 1470, French farce spread quickly throughout Europe, notable examples being the interludes of John Hayward in the 16th century England. Shakespeare and Moliere eventually came to use elements of farce in their comedies. Although most farces are comedies, there is such a thing as tragic farce. In a tragic farce, the humor is always very bleak, but still present. It's a kind of laugh so you don't cry situation. The adjective of farce is farcical. Examples of farce. First example, in ancient Greek theater, audiences were often treated to a short satire play in between tragedies. These plays used very crude but very effective forms of humor, especially sexual jokes and physical comedy. The idea was to let the audience get some comic relief in between the difficult emotional experiences of the tragedies, 
modern farces probably evolved out of satire plays second example sometimes miscommunications lead to absurd farcical situations in real life in fact the 1967 arab israeli war could be thought of as a real life example of a tragic farce israel and its arab neighbors were posturing and bluffing in the run up to the war but none of them actually wanted it to happen then the soviets falsely told the egyptian government that israel was planning to attack its ally syria egypt threatened to attack israel in retaliation but israel saw this as an unprovoked attack since they were never really planning to attack syria in a movie this might be a humorous sequence of flies confusion and miscommunication but in real life it led to thousands of casualties and the current bleak state of the israeli palestinian conflict importance of farce farcical humor appeals to some of our most basic instincts people falling down absurd outlandish situations pies in the face all these things make us laugh for reasons that are somewhat mysterious and yet somehow universal everyone can recognize the comedy of a farce farces are also popular because they develop in a way that seems more or less realistic despite the fact that the results are highly improbable that is the characters make decisions that seem to make some sense given the circumstances but at every turn things get more and more ridiculous this slow build up makes a farce seem somehow believable in spite of the fact that the plot lines are so improbable and absurd this in the end is the very simple purpose of a farce it makes people laugh through broad humor examples of farce in literature first example oscar wilde's the importance of being earnest is a great example of a farce in this play one character has invented a sick brother who lives in the country this gives him an excuse to get out of the city for some excitement but another character enjoys pretending to be someone else while flirting with a certain young woman coincidentally both men have named their fict- fictional characters ernest needless to say things get out of hand pretty quickly as the deceptions get more and more complicated due to the coincidence of names in the end everything unravels and the two men are both revealed as liars but everyone seems inclined to forgive them nonetheless example 2 shakespeare in his sillier moods loved a good farce many of his comedies are based on mistaken identity and the gradual piling up of confusion and chaos in comedy of errors for instance there are two sets of identical twins who frequently get confused for one another in fact this play was so influential that comedy of errors 
is sometimes used as a general term to describe farcical stories. Examples of farce in pop culture. First example, in one episode of Family Guy, Peter loses his job but is ashamed to tell his wife. He lies about it and tries to cover up the problem by secretly going on welfare. Of course, in order to stay on welfare, he has to keep lying to everyone. And by the end of the episode, these lies have turned into a huge tangled mess that comes crashing down on Peter and his family. Example 2. Many sitcoms such as Friends and Coupling rely on the farce as a staple of their plot lines. For example, in one episode of Coupling, several main characters are trying to hide their true intentions by calling each other while pretending to be other, e other people. In the end, everyone is utterly confused about who is who and the audience explodes in laughter when one character who has had nothing to do with all this deception stands up and says somberly, No, Susan, I am Dick Darlington. All the confusion, deception and absurdity make the episode a perfect example of a farce. Absurdism is a related term to farce. It is even more extreme than a farce. In a farce, the characters are all basically believable, but they somehow get into an absurd, highly improbable situation. In an absurdist comedy, however, the characters themselves may be nonsensical. It may be a satanic cucumber playing chess against a purple hippopotamus wearing a flight suit. Basically, everything goes off the rails in a farce. But in absurdism, there aren't any rails to begin with. How to write a farce? The essence of a good farce is the slow build-up to absurdity. In the beginning, everything is more or less normal. A normal family or a normal group of friends facing ordinary situations that the audience can relate to. At each step of the plot, things get just a little ridiculous so that by the end the whole thing is utterly absurd. If you want to write a good farce, the first step is to map out this gradual building up of craziness. This is why mistaken identity works so well in a farce. If two characters are easily confused for one another, example, because they are identical twins who dress alike, then it's perfectly reasonable for people to mix them up. But over time, those little mistakes can add up and in the end, you will have a huge mess of confusion with no character able to figure out what's going on. When writing a farce on the basis of mistaken identity, however, it's important to make things believable. Modern audiences are pretty skeptical about such things and will be inclined to believe that the characters ought to be able to catch their own mistakes. Thus, for example, you can't just say that the two characters are identical twins and leave it at that. You have to go further and specify that they dress similarly have similar mannerisms, etc., et and then explain why they would do things in such a needlessly confusing way. Finally, there's one trick that
that TV writers love for writing farce tell the whole story from one person's perspective then rewind and tell it again from someone else's perspective this gap in perceptions can be a great source of laughs and is also a good way to make social commentary along with your comedy because it shows how a single situation can be viewed differently by people in different groups when to use farce farce is just for fun it can be a great way to structure the plot of a comedy especially a play or screenplay but has no place in essays or other formal writing farce is actually pretty difficult to pull off in writing alone which is why it's far more common in visual media like film tv and theater this is for two reasons first farce is confusing all the mistaken identities deceptions etc are hard for a reader to follow if you give them visual cues it's much easier to dispel that confusion and keep the audience on track even as the plot gradually goes crazy of course that's hard to to do in a non visual medium like writing second farce is often based on sight gags or visual jokes for example here's a sentence with a slapstick joke in the middle reginald was walking along in his usual dignified manner when he slipped on a banana peel and fell face down into some wet concrete did you laugh probably not but if you saw that same thing happen in a cartoon you might find it pretty funny slapstick humor just doesn't translate very well in writing which means it's hard to make a good farce without a visual element in a gist the purpose of the farce is to make the audience feel confused work to figure out the answer and laugh these days you can often see farce used as a staple in tv sitcoms farce exists mainly in ancient greek literature the two main elements of a farce are comedy and absurdity